How's it going everyone? My name is Falling Hurts and today we're going to be talking about the Outlast Trials. It occurred to me that after so long I hadn't made a video about the game in quite a while and I figured it was time to catch up for myself and for anyone who could be watching before the next reveal of the game, hopefully with the release date. And in this video we're going to be breaking down everything that we do actually know from different trailers as well as behind the scenes videos to anything else that I could find that may be important to know about when the game is coming and what you should expect. First off, to go ahead and get the need to knows out of the way, the Outlast Trials is going to be published and developed by Red Barrels. They previously have only made games in the Outlast series, starting with Outlast 1 in 2013, which I actually have a review up for right now as a 2022 review if you want to check that out, as well as its DLC, Whistleblower, and I will be making a video for that as well, and also Outlast 2 leading up to launch. And a cool little tidbit that I always like to note when making videos about Red Barrels is the size of the team. During Outlast 1, they were a team of about 10 employees. Continuing on to Outlast 2, they increased to about 20. And once again, they have doubled for the Outlast Trials to a team of about 40. And of course, originally the game was set to release sometime in 2021. However, due to COVID or whatever, the game was delayed till 2022. And seeing as how we're halfway through 2022, I expect to hear something within the next two months or it's probably going to get pushed to 2023. Though I honestly don't expect that. I am looking more towards an October release. Seeing as how the track record of things go, I just kind of think that fits. But now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about what the Outlast Trials actually is. The Outlast Trials is a first-person horror game with multiplayer elements that you can play solo, but you can have up to three friends with you in different survival scenarios where you have been kidnapped during the late 1950s. And you're more than likely going to be people that the government doesn't care about, like drug addicts or homeless people. It doesn't really matter. The idea is that no one's going to miss you people, much like the victims of the first game as well. Now this takes place during the events of the Cold War and, you know, MKUltra is going to be a really heavy aspect of that with the CIA and everything, but mostly our focal point will be the evil Murkoff Corporation. And these good old buddy old pals will be experimenting on us as the players and our job is to go through the trials to see exactly how these experiments will affect us as the player. And me personally, as a bit of speculation, I would love to see that at the end of the game that the effects of whatever they're giving us or doing to us is going to make it an Among Us style game. And I don't mean that as a joke, I mean quite literally that at least one of the players will go bad and start hunting the other players by the end. I think that would be a really cool thing. However, this would only work in single player if the other players were transferred into AI. But either way, that's the basic story premise for the game and all we really know. However, I can expand a bit more as we do know a little bit more about the characters of the game. First off, we've got a friendly guy. Uh, his name is Mr. Noakes. Um, he's actually going to be where we buy our upgrades. And I'll get in a little bit more what I think those upgrades will be when I talk about the gameplay here in just a second. But for right now, all we need to know is that he's a friendly guy that's going to be sitting in the lobby in between rounds of trials. What currency we'll use to, you know, pay him, I'm not sure. Perhaps we'll get paid a currency each time we complete an objective with potential bonus objectives adding to bonus points. Another character we know just a little bit more about than the rest is the name of Coil. He is a police officer who is really mangled up and he's got a bunch of electricity all over his body. He likes to torture his victims and he has a really twisted sense of what justice and the right thing is. Another character that we've got that is featured quite a bit in the uh, marketing for the most recent trailer is Mrs. or just Gooseberry. She is a character who was deformed or malformed at some point. She lost her face probably through a burning or something, and she's got someone else's face on there instead. She's a children's television host with daddy issues, and her father is represented through a little duck-type mannequin that she always holds on her hand, but unfortunately for us, it also doubles as a screw-type weapon that she can use against us as well. These are actually the two enemies that we get the most time with in any of these behind-the-scenes videos, but there is a lot of motion capture shown off between a couple of the videos, and there's very different animations, especially ones with big axes and hammers, who are also enemies shown in the gameplay reveal. So don't worry about there being a variety of different enemies. I think Outlast Trials actually has that pretty down pat. Along with the enemies, there will be plenty of different environments to go through. For instance, there is the Toy Factory. There also seems to be different replicas of cities and other unique locations that I'm sure we haven't been revealed to. Either way, it seems that between these different trials, this will be how the location and gameplay variety will be achieved. 
But, you know, I've tiptoed around it enough, let's go ahead and hop right into the gameplay, and I think this is where the game gets the most interesting, not only because it's different, but because it seems to be very coherent. First off, in the gameplay trailers as well as the behind the scenes, we're actually queued into quite a few different things. First off, there are going to be different projectiles and usables that we can use against the enemies. For instance, there is a cross that may repel certain enemies, there is a bottle of some type of powder or liquid that will hopefully disorient the enemy that way the players can go and hide again. There are mines, looks like electricity fields. I'm not sure if that's placed by the enemy or the player at this point. And overall, it seems like the players have a lot at their disposal, and that's part of what I think Mr. Noakes will be able to help us upgrade when we go back to the lobbies. It's important to note that it does seem that the enemies are able to lay traps as well. There's one point where the player opens the door and they are hit with a piece of wood. And honestly, more than likely, that's more probably an alarm for the enemies than anything. But that's actually it as far as what we know about what we'll be able to do to fight back. Fighting back a whole new mechanic against enemies as the previous Outlast games have never had anything like that. It's always been a hide and seek game. However, with the other players involved, there will be a little bit more player agency as to what you can do. Perhaps one player will distract the enemies while the others go and do the objectives. The objectives, for instance, are shown off as simply something like stabilizing a valve or even side objectives, something I mentioned earlier, I think will get you bonus points, such as collecting multiple posters. And that's really the only instance or example that we have as of right now, but I'm sure there will be more than just that. Now, in the gameplay trailer, there isn't really too much HUD shown. It is really heavily indicated that between obstacles and other things like that, the players can also help each other. Something that I think that player agency thing I mentioned earlier is really going to come in big here. But yet another thing that wasn't shown in the gameplay reveal, but was shown in the behind the scenes video, is actually the HUD for the game. And I'm not going to lie, it looks a little messy. I'm not really sure I'm fond of it. It's a little too colorful, much how Doom 2016 to Doom Eternal, so much color in between those two games, and it's really a weird tonal shift for the series. Looking at this screenshot here, there's quite a few things to note. First off, main assignment would be valve stabilization, as I mentioned, as well as side assignment of collecting posters. That's something I've already went over. Again, I think you will be compensated for any extra assignments you do. However, on the screen just underneath that, it's kind of hard to tell because the character isn't moving too much, there is an objective indicator there. So there will, to some degree, be some level of guidance throughout this game. I wonder if it's going to be way more confusing, especially with multiple enemies. Another thing we see here, outside of the enemy standing directly in front of us, is actually that the cursor is an open eye, seemingly indicating that the player is detected, and probably the eye will close when the player is stealth and not detected, or there's no enemies around. Down in the bottom right, we have a red heart, which is the health bar at 100%, a kind of teal brain, which to me indicates a sanity meter of some kind. We've got your electric bolt, which I would think is your stamina, but what confuses me by that is the blue lungs, which is also at 100. Unless there's some deep diving swimming mechanic, I would assume that that's your stamina, and the electric is actually perhaps a flashlight or your night vision goggles that you're wearing. As there's no camera in this game, it's all done through a headset that's been attached to the player's head. Finally, we have a hand with a skull times two by it. I think what this is is how many times you can revive other players. I'm not entirely sure about that, and I don't know for sure. It could also be how many projectiles you're holding. I'm not entirely sure, but either way, let me know what you think down below. Personally, I think the gameplay looks like it could be fun, and it could be very engaging, especially depending on how much level of variety there will be. The story isn't something that's been shown off quite a bit, but it is something that's been talked about just a little bit. So I'm hoping that the story is still ever-present and not just a completely gameplay, multiplayer-focused thing. But anyways, let me know what you think down below. That's really all we have for this video. We've got some pretty interesting characters, which are always a staple of the Outlast series. We've got the usual gameplay objectives with a couple new ones, which seemingly indicate where the gameplay will be going. Either way, I think this is going to be a pretty fun time, and I'm looking forward to see where the story goes. Look forward to this game at the end of the year, or if not in the next couple months for another reveal, but if you don't see something soon by the end of the summer, it's going to be pushed to 2023. But all around, you should just go ahead and subscribe to the channel, as I'll be posting any updates that I do find, with any speculation and behind-the-scenes stuff as well. Thank you so much for watching this video, my name is Falling Hurts, and yeah, bye!